What's up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you guys some of the key strategies that I've been doing on this channel that have been working really well for me since the year started. I truly feel like I've revived my channel, not just from a stat standpoint and views and engagement and all that, but more so from a creator standpoint. I am so much happier creating my videos this year than I did last year. And I think a lot of the changes that I've made to my channel is basically a representation of that or is a result of that. And so if you are interested in learning the top strategies that I'm implementing this year that have been working for my channel that I will be continuing so that you can grow your channel, then keep on watching. So let's talk about the first tip or strategy that has helped me boost my engagement for my YouTube channel, but has also made me infinitely more happier as a content creator. And that was switching to a vlog style delivery format. What this means is no longer am I just sitting down and hitting record and just talking to the camera, but I am walking around my house. I am showing you guys where I live. I'm getting up close and personal and I'm experimenting with different angles, which has been so, so much fun. Not to mention, it also increases the engagement, especially for a niche like mine where it's really education heavy. I really appreciate having that range of motion so that I'm kind of vlogging, but I'm not vlogging. And it allows you guys to watch the videos for longer. So let me show you my old setup so you can compare. All right, so we are in my office right now. Don't mind the boxes. I'm going through a little office renovation, but essentially this was my old setup. Yes, I did put it in my bathroom because I know where else to put it. But essentially this was like a really fancy setup with a rolling studio, a monitor, a really expensive and heavy mirrorless camera, a microphone and some fancy lighting. And as you can see here, it was really hard to create any type of range of motion or dynamic. I really would just sit down, hit play and just start filming, which made my videos kind of stale and kind of boring, not gonna lie. All right, so this section of the video that you're watching right now is filmed with my iPhone. You just simply go to your settings and change it to film in 4K and 60 frames per second. But essentially, I'm gonna show you what I downsized to. This is my new setup that you guys have probably been watching since the year started. And I love this setup so much. This is the Sony ZV-1 vlogging camera. It is not a mirrorless camera. And so it is super lightweight and really easy to use. This stick right here is my Joby Grip Type Pro. And essentially it is a selfie stick but you can also double it up and use it as a tripod. So it has a two-in-one type of functionality, which I really, really love. And then finally, the microphone that I use is a really inexpensive one. It's called the Rode Video Micro, and it's just amazing. And this is all I use now. So I've downsized by so much. I can put this in my purse. I can just play around with it. It's just so much easier to use than what I had before. And by the way, if you cannot afford something like this, then I just want to tell you that an iPhone works just as well. I'm filming with an iPhone right now, just so that you guys can see. And you can also get a very similar effect. Oh, and by the way, I should probably mention that the camera flips out too. So that's what makes it so awesome because I can see what the heck I'm actually doing when I'm filming. Now moving on to the next strategy that has been working really well for me, and that is adding chapters to my YouTube videos. And this was actually further validated by you guys. I pulled you guys over on my Instagram stories. And by the way, follow me on Instagram if you aren't already. And I asked you guys if you guys appreciate it or you prefer if creators add chapters to their YouTube videos. And a majority of you said yes. Now, let me explain to you why this helps you as the creator. I don't know about you, but when I look at a video, I don't want to waste 10 minutes, 20 minutes of my time. And so by having chapters, I know what's ahead. Another thing from a creator perspective is I would rather you watch a part of my video than not watching the video at all. So at least the chapters will let you know which areas of the video you're most interested in and you might want to skip to. Now, obviously in an ideal world, I would want my audience members to watch the full video, but the truth of the matter is most of your audience members members are not watching the full video. And so by having the chapters, it's like having an agenda. It'll tell you whether or not you want to stay for that meeting based on what the agenda is covering. Now, if you are a content creator and you have no idea how to add chapters to your YouTube video, it is really, really simple. All you have to do is timestamp your videos, add those timestamps to your description box. And once you save your description, it'll automatically add those chapters for you if you did those timestamps correctly. Now, so far in this video, I talked about switching up my delivery style, adding chapters, and all these things are really meant to increase engagement and increase retention. But let me talk to you about one thing that has been working so well for me when it comes to increasing engagement on my videos. 
So one thing that I noticed last year when I was doing my YouTube videos was that not a lot of people were commenting on my videos. I could have thousands and thousands and thousands of views, but I have less than 100 comments on my videos, which was not really common. And I noticed that there was definitely a shift in the way that my audience engaged with my content. And so what I decided experimenting for this year is near the end of all of my videos, I always say, if you watched until the end of this video, comment below this keyword so that I know you got to this point. And to my surprise, people actually did it. It was so cool to see people comment on my videos with those keywords. A good example is in this video right here, I told people to comment the keyword bananas in the comment section if they got to the end of the video. Or in this video, I told people to comment 1% in the comment section so I knew they got to that point. And I noticed that my comment engagement has been a lot higher because of this tactic. And so I'm just sharing that with you because it's definitely working for me. Also, why wait until the end of the video? Comment right now. My channel is going to blow up. So I know two things. Number one, you got until this section of the video. And number two, let's make it a self-fulfilling prophecy. I genuinely want your channels to blow up this year thanks to the tips that I'm sharing with you guys today. So let me know in the comment section below that you're claiming that energy. Anyways, let's dive right back into the tips. Now, so far in this video, we talked about different ways to get engagement on the content, but now let's talk about how I'm getting more views this year. Specifically, there are six ways that I do it. The first way is to create an IG story trailer for each of my videos that I upload every single week. And so what I do is I tell my video editor to create a 30 second trailer of my YouTube video that I post on my Instagram story. Very similar to a trailer that you would watch for a movie that you would see in theaters, it basically shows all the high points of the video. It doesn't give the full video away, but it's enough to get people enticed and interested in actually clicking to watch the full video itself. Now, one of the most amazing things about the latest Instagram update is that you no longer need 10K followers to get the swipe up feature, and now everyone has access to the link sticker. So this is another step that I like to do. Instead of sharing the standard link to my YouTube videos, like this one right here, what I like to share instead is the link that's embedded in the playlist. Now you might be wondering, what the heck are you talking about? So let me walk you through my workflow. When I upload my videos, I also save them to my playlist. I have a playlist for Instagram hacks, YouTube hacks, entrepreneurship, quit the nine to five, all those different categories of my channel. Now, when I'm going to link my video in my Instagram story, I go over to the playlist instead and I grab that link. That way, when someone clicks on that link, it'll actually show them into the playlist instead. So when they're done watching the video that they wanted to watch, they then get recommended more videos in my playlist. Versus if you use the standard link like this one, there's a high chance that all of your competitors' videos are gonna be recommended to them instead. So this is definitely a little hack that I recommend you doing when you're promoting your videos so that you can get more views on your other videos. Now, speaking of links, here is another game-changing strategy that I will definitely keep doing this year, and that is using campsite.bio. Now, over on this video right here, I mentioned how I use campsite.bio, but I actually found a new feature that has blown my mind. So let me share my screen and show you what I'm talking about. All right, so over on campsite, what you're gonna do is you're going to click here and then click on feed. Once you click on feed, you're going to connect it with your YouTube channel and add either a playlist or your actual channel. There's the channel and then finish setup. Now, once it's integrated, it's going to feed into your YouTube channel. You can show as many videos as you want. I pick three and then I put a header. And what it ends up looking like is like this. So what campsite's going to do is it's automatically going to pull your latest three videos into your link in bio. So now you don't have to manually schedule them. Another strategy that I do to get more views on my YouTube video, but also have gotten me a lot more engagement and reach over on my Instagram is actually turning some tips that I share in my YouTube videos into Instagram reels. This has helped me so much in a sense where people can actually enjoy the content on its own on Instagram and it performs and can stand on its own. But my call to action will always tell people, hey, if you want the full video, head over to my YouTube channel and watch the full thing. Not only this, the reason why I like this is the fact that I can also re repurpose these Instagram reels onto TikTok. And I have a feeling that when I repurpose them on TikTok, I'm going to explode the amount of traffic that I get on my channel. All right, let's talk about my next tip because the tips do not stop. And that is making sure that your channel homepage is updated. One thing that I do now is every time I upload a new video, I always make sure that my featured video is my most recent video to my returning subscribers. And here is a pro tip for you. You definitely wanna make sure that your channel homepage is optimized. What I like to do is I like to organize my playlists into my homepage so that people can see the variety of categories that my channel covers. Not only this, an 
additional step that I'm gonna be working on is every single quarter, I think I'm gonna audit my playlist and make sure that my most popular videos are at the front rather than at the end so that it shows up on my homepage because all the videos that are typically on your homepage will get the most views. And a tip that I have for you is when it comes to YouTube, you really wanna focus on your winners and kind of forget about your losers. And so for me, when I notice that there are some videos that are performing worse than others, I tend to not focus on those videos anymore and I instead focus all of my attention on the videos that are already doing really well. Meaning that I'm more likely to promote those videos in my cards, I'm more likely to put those videos in my end screen, I'm more likely to re-promote those videos because when you are monetized on YouTube, let's say, let's say you're getting AdSense revenue, you definitely want to focus on pushing the videos that are performing well because they're already making money for you. So the more views that you put towards them, the more money that you make. It's a lot harder to actually grow videos that are already not performing versus spending your time on things that are already working well. So that's my long spiel in terms of how to get more views and how to make sure that your attention is put towards the right videos. Even if you aren't monetized on YouTube, you still wanna follow my advice because when your videos are getting momentum, you wanna add more fuel to that fire versus trying to grow videos that aren't doing well off the game. And the reason why is because there's a compound effect. If something's already building momentum, you add fuel to it, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and you can get more views versus when you are trying to grow something that's like, kind of limp and kind of failing, then there's no point. You should just scrap it and move ahead. And so that is definitely a piece of advice that I have for you that I use for my channel that has worked really, really well. Now let's talk about one more strategy that has worked really well for me and that I will absolutely be continuing this year and that is embedding my YouTube videos in my weekly newsletter. Now this is a strategy that I've done in the past but it wasn't as effective as the way that I'm doing it right now. Before, I would send a weekly newsletter out to my email list and that newsletter was all promotional. It was like, check out my new video, here's what we're covering, click here to watch. And there wasn't really any value in the newsletter whatsoever. Versus this year, I actually launched my content creator to CEO newsletter where every single Monday morning I share exclusive stories, exclusive tips that I don't share anywhere else on my other platforms and people have been loving it. I went from like 10% open rates to 30, 40, 50% open rates, which is absolutely mind blowing. And what's awesome about this is because the content itself in the newsletter is so engaging, it's really easy to promote the videos. I usually just embed my video maybe at the top of the newsletter or at the end of the newsletter, but every single week I do try to make sure my latest YouTube video is included in this content piece and it has been working really well for me. So if you are a content creator, I highly recommend maybe starting your own newsletter series where you can also push your videos at the same time. Now, so far in this video, I have really shared a lot of the strategies that I'll personally be using this year. So if you got to this point, make sure you comment below and say, my channel is gonna blow up. So I know that you'll be implementing some of these tips. Now, one thing that I always mention in my videos is that there is one thing of getting more likes, views, and subscribers, but there is another of actually making money. So if you wanna learn how I went from being a content creator to an actual income producing CEO, then make sure you click the link in my description box and attend my free training where I walk Walk through the entire roadmap step by step. As always guys, I really appreciate you watching my videos. If you like more videos like this, then make sure you watch these two videos that I have here as well. As always, I appreciate y'all and I will see you next week. Good luck with your channels.